In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural ground beef material. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Now this is a raw ground beef material, so this could be like added to a ground beef patty before it's cooked, or it could be added to like a meatball before it's cooked. Now if you'd like to watch some other procedural material videos which are very similar to this, I also have a beef steak material and also a raw beef steak material and then I also have a meatball material and it actually has some sauce on it and then I also have a hamburger meat patty. So if you're interested in watching those videos after this video, I'll have the link to all those other meat tutorials in the description. So after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom nude group. So we have the scale so you can change this depending on the size of your object and then we also have the detail value if you want to turn the detail down and then we have two different colors so we have color one which is kind of that red meat color and then color two which is kind of those little bits of fat in the ground beef so the little bits of fat are kind of a whiter color then we also have the roughness of the meat then we also have the subsurface and the subsurface really makes it look like soft and fleshy and it makes it look like food and then we also have the bump strength of the material and then finally we have the displacement strength so if you'd like to purchase this procedural material you can get it with the links in the video description and you can also purchase my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gear Mode store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So first I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I went here to mesh and I added an icosphere because I want to add this to a spherical object. And then here on the add icosphere settings right behind me, I'm going to turn the subdivisions up to like a six so it is nice and smooth and round. And then I'll use the object context menu and I'll shade the object smooth. Then I'm going to scale the object down by a 0.2 and I'll press Control A and apply the scale. So that's the new default size of the object. And then I also wanted to add this onto like a burger patty. So this was really easy to make. Basically, I just added a cylinder and I scaled it down by a 0.2 and applied the scale. And then in edit mode, I just kind of squished it down. I'll just bring it over here so you can see it a little bit better. And then in edit mode, I just added some loop cuts and I scaled the loop cuts up a bit. And then if you go to the face select and select both the top and bottom faces, you can inset those faces just like that. And then one thing that I find works better for the displacements is that there isn't a face here and it instead all comes into the center. So if you inset this one more time, then what you can do is click here on the transform pivot point and change it to individual origins so that they'll both be scaled individually and you can scale them by zero and then hit enter so they're both in the center and then if you select everything you can hit M and merge by distance so it'll merge those so there's just one vertex there and then one vertex there and I find that helps the displacements to look a bit better then you can hit Control 2 to add a subdivision surface and just shade it smooth and then I also added a camera and I just pointed the camera at the objects and if you select the camera and then go over here to the object data properties I turn the focal length up to 80 just to kind of zoom the camera in a bit so then I also added an area light to the scene so I just added this area light right here so once you add the area light if you go to the object data properties I set the shape to disk and I turned the power up to 100 and just had it pointing down just so we get some nice bright lighting in the scene. And also to give some nice realistic world lighting or reflections, I went over here to the world properties and I added in this Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. So link will be in the video description if you want to download it. So once you download the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color and you can click on environment texture and then just open up the downloaded HDRI. Then if you want to set the background transparent, you can go up here to the render properties and you can open up the film tab right there the film tab and then just check mark the transparent button so it's still going to light the scene but it's not as distracting because you can't see it in the background and then also here on the color management i'm using the view transform of filmic and the look of very high contrast so I'm in the shading workspace, so click here to go to the shader editor. So I have the 3D viewport right over here. I'm just going to go into the camera view, and I'll go into the rendered view. I'm just going to select one of the objects. Let's click on new to add a new material, and I can just call this ground beef. And then I can click and drag and drop the material onto the other object, so they both have the same material. And then I will also be using the Node Wrangler add-on in the video, so if you don't have that enabled, you can click on edit, and you can go to the preferences. And then over here on the add-ons tab, if you go to the search, you can search for Node and just enable the Node Wrangler add-on and I'll show you how to use it in the video. Now I'm going to start by adding two different textures. We're first going to search for a noise texture and the noise texture
texture is just going to be the main texture over the material to make the little lumpy bits. But then I also want to have some other bits here, which are kind of more circular, and they're going to be white, and those are going to be the little bits of fat in the meat. So to do this, we're going to search for a Voronoi texture. So we'll drop the Voronoi above the noise. So let's select the texture, and we'll hit Control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I want to use the object coordinates because the object coordinates will place the textures on the object more evenly. So I'll put the object into the vector. And let's now take the mapping vector and we're going to put that into the vector of the noise texture. So let's start by previewing the noise texture and I can change some of the noise settings. So I'm going to turn the scale to 30 and I'm going to turn the detail up to 10 so it's pretty detailed and then I'll leave the other settings how they are. So let's now preview the Voronoi and for the Voronoi I'm going to turn the scale up to like a 19.5 so you can see all those little dots there and then I'm also going to take the F1 and I'm going to change it to smooth F1 and this is going to kind of smooth out those edges. And let's also turn this detail value to one, so it just has a little bit more detail. So I now wanna mix both of these textures together, so I'm gonna drag these nodes back, and to mix the two colors together, we can search for a mixed color, just drop this here, and we wanna put the Voronoi distance here into color B, and then we're gonna take the noise texture factor, and we're gonna put that into color A. Now what I wanna do is just add the dark values, so we're gonna take the mix here, and we're gonna change it to darken, so it just adds the dark values. So as I drag this up more and more, you can see it's just just adding the dark values. So I'm going to turn the factor to a 0.65. Now I do want to change the colors of the Voronoi. So I'm going to search for a color ramp and we'll drop the color up here after the Voronoi but before the mixed color which is set to darken. And what I'm going to do is first switch these tabs. So I'm going to switch them. So now the white is over here and the black is over here. And this way now you can just see those little white parts are going to be popping kind of in front. So these little white bits here which are going to be where the fat is in the meat that's going to be kind of on top of the noise texture. So I'm going to put the black tab kind of do about here and then for this white tab I'm going to make it kind of a gray color so it's not super blown out because I don't want it to be too strong or too visible and if you want to use the same color you can punch in this same exact hex value into the white color so it's a9, A9, A9. So just kind of like a light gray color. So now you can see those little whiter parts there are going to be like the white parts that are going to be the fat inside the ground beef. And then you can also of course drag this factor around to have more of the noise or more of the Voronoi, but I'm just going to leave it at a 0.65 so you can definitely see the noise, but those little white parts kind of pop out more. So let's now take the darken result and I can put that in the base color and then I'll control shift select the principal shader. Now what I want to do here is create some custom colors. So to do this, I'm going to search for the mix color. So add the mix color node and drop it here after the darken, but before the principal shader. And this darken result can go into the factor. So now we can make two different colors for color A and color B. So for color A, I'm going to make this kind of like the base meat color. So it's going to be kind of like a pinkish red, kind of like that. And then color B is going to be kind of like a peachy tannish color for the white spot. And if you want to use the same exact colors that I'm using, color A is going to be this hex value right here. So you can copy that hex value if you want to use the same color. And then here for color B, I'm going to be using this hex value right here for color B. Now, if you kind of look at the texture, it's kind of grayed out. It's kind of blending too much and there's not enough contrast. So I'm going to search for another color ramp and we'll put this between the darken and the mix. And then what I can do is just drag these two values together and that is going to make the black parts darker and the whiter parts lighter. So if I drag them closer together, there's gonna be a lot more contrast. So I'm gonna drag the black tab to about here and the white tab over to about here. So you can see there's just a little bit more contrast. So let's now control shift select the principal shader and that definitely looks better. Let's now take the roughness and I'm gonna turn that down to like a 0.2 so it's quite a bit more shiny. And then also to make it look more fleshy and look make it look more like food, let's open up the subsurface and I'm gonna turn the subsurface weight all the way up to one. And here on the random walk, I'm gonna change this to random walk skin and that's gonna make it look even more kind of fleshy and more like food. So now I wanna add this into the bump to give it some surface bump. So we're gonna search for a bump node, drop this down here and then the darker result that can go into the height value and then the bump normal can go into the normal of the principal shader and then let's turn the strength down a bit to like a 0.4 so it's not quite as bumpy now I do also want to add it into the displacement to make it pop out of the mesh to really make it look more realistic so I'm going to search for the displacement node and we'll put this underneath the principal shader and I can now take the darker result and let's put that into the height value and then the displacement 
can go into the displacement of the material output. Now you can see it looks like it's really bumpy, but it's still not popping out of the mesh. That's because we need to open up the side panel and we need to go to the material settings. And on the displacement, we need to take the bump only and we need to change that to displacement and bump. So this is telling the material that it can use the displacements. So now what I can do is change the scale because you can see it's popping out way too much. So let's turn the scale to a 0.05. So now if I zoom in here to the side, you can see it is popping out of the mesh, but it's actually kind of going back in. Now I can change the mid-level. I can turn the mid-level up and down to kind of make it more in the center. But what I'm gonna do is just actually use a math node instead. So I'm just gonna search for the math node and drop it here before the displacement. And then I can just drag this value around. So it's going to add more value. So if I control shift selected to preview it, you can see as I turn this up, it's gonna be more and more white. And if it's more white, that is going to pop out more in the displacements. So I'm gonna turn the value to just like a 0.4. And now I can control shift select the principal shader again. So now you can see it's kind of more even there in the center of the shape of the mesh. And now it really is looking like some raw ground beef. So that's it for the procedural material. So let's now join it together into a node group. So I'm gonna box select all the nodes except the material output, and I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group, and I'll hit the Tab key to go outside the node group, and we'll just drag the node group right over here, and I can copy the material name, and I can paste it here into the node group. So let's hit the tab key to go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel. And then here on the group socket, so let's double click on the BSDF and I'll rename it to shader because I like that better. So if I hit tab to go outside the node group, you can see it's just called shader there. So let's hit tab to go back into the node group. So now I can take the group input and I can plug up all the custom values to control those values outside of the node group. So the first value that I wanna control is the overall size of the entire material. So the mapping is plugged up to both textures. So the scale will change the size of the entire material material. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket here. And then if I click on the scale, I want to make it one in value instead of three. So we'll change the type from vector to float. And then I need to turn the default value to one. And right now you can see it almost looks like a plastic material because the scale is at zero. So if we go outside the node group, we need to turn the scale back to one. So now that'll change the size of both textures at once. So we'll go back into the node group. Then I want to control the detail of the noise, so let's just drag the ribbon input right down here, and we'll put the detail into the extra socket. And then I want to control the colors, so I'll just drag the group input right up here, and let's take color A and color B, and we'll put those into the extra socket. And then if you double click on this, I'll rename it to color 1, and then also color two. And then let's take the roughness and put that into the extra socket, and then also the subsurface here, take the subsurface weight and put that into the extra socket. And personally, if I click and drag this down here, personally, I think it's better if I just call this subsurface. You can call it subsurface weight or subsurface scattering, whatever you wanna call it. I like to keep it kind of neat and simple, so I'm just gonna call it subsurface. And then I wanna control the bump strength, so I'll drag the group input right down here, and I'll put the strength into the extra socket. And let's just rename this bump strength. And then I also want to control the displacement strength. So we'll take the displacement scale, put that into the extra socket, and I'll rename this to displacement strength. So let's hit the end key to close the side panel. Let's drag the group input right back there. And I'll hit tab to go outside the node group. So we have the overall scale to change the size of the entire material. Then we also have the detail value if you want to change that. And then we have the different colors. So color one, you could even make this look a bit more cooked by making it darker or more of like a brown color. And then also you can change color two and that's kind of like the white color for the pieces of fat in the meat. And then we also have the roughness of the material. We also have the subsurface to make it look a lot more like food. And then we have the bump strength and then and finally, the displacement strength to pop out the mesh. So that'll be it for this tutorial. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can also check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And I also just have some procedural food packs. So if you'd just like to purchase some packs of procedural food materials, then you can find those food packs with the links in the description. Or you can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more materials, you can check out my Blender Procedural Material Tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And I do also have some more meat tutorials, so if you want to check those out, I have a beefsteak material, a raw beefsteak material, a meatball material, and also a hamburger meat patty material. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you for watching.